Hi, you're watching Meet the Diplomat and with us on the show today is the Ambassador of Kazakhstan, Mr. Karat Umarov. Hi. Thank you. Let's talk about the relationship first, the two countries, India and Kazakhstan, we both share. Various factors such as historical relationship and the strategic situation, the economic potential, they pave the way for a better and unique relationship. But how far we have moved together, you think? I think that uh, it's uh, very important words which you mentioned actually. Uh, we have quite a good historical background for our relationship. Uh, we started our cooperation back when the Silk Road, you know, Great Silk Road, which was running uh, and connecting actually the Europe and Asia some uh, years ago. But uh, the relationship started even earlier than this. 2000 years ago, uh, the Buddhism went from India right. to China, and it crossed Kazakhstan, and we have some uh, good examples of that. Uh, we have petroglyphs on the uh, rocks. Uh, the same as Sufism came from Central Asia to India at that time. Uh, economic potential, the same. Uh, India today is developing 9% GDP growth, Kazakhstan 10% right. GDP growth. So both of the countries are on the uh, rise. That, is, uh, that means that we can cooperate together, we can work together. How far we, we went today, uh, I can say that uh, we are progressing very rapidly, very fastly. Uh, last three years, the GDP growth, uh, uh, the uh, trade turnover was growing like 20, 30%. Last year, it was 74%. So that means we have quite a good potential. But when it comes to strengthening the relationship between India and the whole of the region of Central Asia, what important role do you think especially Kazakhstan can play? Kazakhstan can play uh, a vital role in that area because uh, if you look at Kazakhstan, uh, it's uh, situated in the very heart of Eurasia. So it means that we are on the crossroads of civilizations, of transportation routes, so very good transit position between China, Russia, India, Arab countries. Uh, the other thing is, uh, Kazakhstan has a very well-developed economy. We are progressing quite uh, actively. Just a few facts for, uh, for you to have. Uh, first of all, uh, Kazakhstan today has uh, a, the best investment-friendly uh, climate. Uh, we are among the 20 most uh, uh, investment friendly countries in the world by the World Bank assessment. Uh, the other thing is that uh, Kazakhstan today has quite a lot of resources. For example, GDP of Kazakhstan is uh, more than all the Central Asian countries combined together. We have 100% convertibility of currency, 100% freedom of capital flow and uh, people's flow. So uh, we have quite a good uh, situation so inside of you, the country. No, but you mean to say that Central Asia altogether is becoming the central point for the whole world? Uh, not to the whole world, I think, uh, but still uh, because of our hydrocarbons reserves, uh, because of the uh, growing importance uh, uh, of Afghanistan st stability, security, I think uh, Central Asia's role and importance is growing very much. No, but how does Russia look at the interference or the involvement of the U.S. in Central Asia, uh, or especially Kazakhstan? Uh, we have a good relationship with Russia and the United States, uh, and uh, we, of course, uh, would like to position ourselves as a uh, country which could help to bring stability and security into that area. But my question is, how does Russia look at the interference, involvement, or the entry of the US into Kazakhstan or Central Asia? Uh, Kazakhstan, for example, does not have any problem with US or Russia involvement in uh, Central Asia. Uh, more than that, I would like to say that uh, we today cooperate actively with both of the countries. Uh, of course, there are some feelings, maybe uneasiness, on uh, each of the side, but uh, it's kind of their problems. And what platform, how big platform does Kazakhstan provide to India? I mean to ask, how far can India involve in Kazakhstan? 
Just uh, let me uh, say that Kazakhstan today is modernizing its economy. Uh, we before were the raw material country. We supplied mostly the raw materials. Now we're modernizing and we are looking today more at high-tech areas. Uh, we would like to develop the processing industries and uh, uh, more uh, work in the areas where know-how will be brought to the country. Uh, let me just enumerate some of the clusters, some of the priority sectors which we today are looking at. And they are petrochemical sector, textile sector, uh, tourism, uh, food industry, uh, construction materials. And if you look at all of them, I think that there are big convergence uh, in uh, what India has a speciality in. So uh, I think that for uh, India today, it's, uh, it would be of interest to come to Kazakhstan and to work That's in Kazakhstan. That's what Kazakhstan being the second largest republic uh, of the former Soviet Union, it holds a special place in India's heart. But there are a lot of stumbling blocks, there are a lot of roadblocks which stops the relationship to grow. Don't you think so? No, I don't think. I think the main roadblock today is the uh, unawareness of uh, Indian public about Kazakhstan, about the potentials and opportunities they can find in Kazakhstan. Uh, just uh, if I mention to you that uh, territory of Kazakhstan is actually the same as India's. It's uh, as large as India's territory. Uh, if I just say that uh, it's three and a half hours away from Delhi, right. uh, I think that people don't aware of that. They think that Kazakhstan is some kind of faraway country. No one knows. It's no one understands. And the main, the major roadblock is the unawareness of public about what they can find there. And what they can find there, you can ask me, I can tell you, they can find their good investment climate, they could find very friendly people, they could find their uh, very beautiful nature, which but they can enjoy. But what are we doing? And awareness is one of the major issues. So what are we doing to get away from it? I think uh, by the way of just telling about Kazakhstan, you already are kind of removing this roadblock. There are other uh, things like maybe transportation routes. But uh, when you uh, look at the trade turnover growth just last year, 74%, I think that even without this transportation links, there is a great interest to develop this relationship and have this trade turnover. So I think it's a very good index of interest and possibilities. We'll talk on more issues after short break. Keep watching Meet the Diplomat. Welcome back. You're watching Meet the Diplomat. Kazakhstan energy resource potential. It's well known to India. But how can we both move together to explore this sector? We have already uh, moving to, uh, uh, towards that end. And uh, uh, Kazmunai Gas, it's a Kazakh national company. And ONGC Videsh Limited is already on negotiations uh, on the uh, coming into Kazakhstan energy sector. So uh, this is kind of a commercial uh, negotiations and uh, of course it's up to the companies uh, to uh, decide. But on the side of the government, uh, we have already uh, provided tender-free uh, access uh, for uh, ONGC Videsh uh, Limited to come to Kazakhstan. When do you think this negotiation will work, would come uh, into action? I hope uh, as soon as possible. Uh, it's, uh, uh, we do not regulate uh, the commercial part of this. But do you think there's some security threat also on energy resources in CIS countries? I don't think so, uh, because uh, uh, today uh, the countries are well developed and uh, uh, you know that this area is uh, having quite a uh, rich resources, uh, natural resources. And all of the countries today are working how to securely to get them out from that area, to sell it and to profit. On but it. Kazakhstan is not away from religious extremism, right? Uh, actually, in today's globalized world, really, the world is so small that uh, anything could happen. As for Kazakhstan internally, I don't think that there is a, a great problem towards that. Of course, this problem could be brought from outside because we're not far from uh, Afghanistan. We don't have immediate border, but still we are not far from it. But to avoid that, uh, all of us cooperating actively uh, in so Afghanistan. You're saying that because Afghanistan, you're close to Afghanistan. It is one of the factor why religious extremism could be active in your country. Yes, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, some of the religious preachers uh, come 
from that area. And plus, we have uh, such a movement like Hizbut Tahrir, for example, which is uh, quietly trying to uh, change the order in uh, our part of the world, constitutional order. So this is a kind of a threat, but it's uh, not active threat. Uh, today we are uh, coping with it uh, by uh, trying to uh, make all the necessary means to stop the penetration of this religious uh, extremism into our territory. No, but because India is also not aware from this kind of problem. So how can we both cooperate with each other to resolve or to solve this problem? Uh, we have already established the uh, bilateral joint working group on counterterrorism issues. And uh, last year we had here the second meeting of this group and uh, the re uh, uh, relevant authorities were meeting and talking, exchanging the information. And I think it's very important uh, part of the dia dialogue because we have to know about the threats coming from uh, anywhere to both of the countries. And we are cooperating today on that. And uh, we expecting another meeting this year uh, in Kazakhstan. So the dialogue is going on. And uh, telling in principle, I think that India today, as well as Kazakhstan, uh, is very much interested in export markets. In order to develop export markets, you have to have the stability and security around the borders of uh, each of the countries. We are not cooperating only bilateral, bilaterally. Uh, we cooperate multilaterally as well. Uh, Kazakhstan has put forward the initiative uh, on convening the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia. And this is a security mechanism for the whole Asia. Today, 18 countries are members to that conference. India also a part of it and very active part of it from the very beginning. And we are trying to find the ways how we can cooperate together in bringing security into that area. Plus to that, uh, I can mention the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, right. which also has this counter-terrorism center, which is active today. And uh, India is a observer, has an observer st status to uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So we can cooperate in that venues as well. And as far as trade is concerned, we are growing together, we are moving hand in hand together. Indian but we also has. disagree on this fact that despite of Kazakh government's good response to manufacturers and investors in India, investors are really not uh, pushing themselves ahead to invest in uh, a country like Kazakhstan. I think uh, here we have some kind of a perception problem. And uh, if, of course, at the beginning of our independence, there was quite a mess uh, in our countries because after the breaking up, uh, breaking up of the former Soviet Union in 1991, in each of the country there was a uh, very uh, unstable situation. And uh, some of the probably companies trying to come to Kazakhstan, they couldn't find the inducive atmosphere there. Uh, but today, uh, I should say that uh, this perception is kind of a frozen in time. So today, it's an absolutely different uh, area. It's absolutely different country uh, with uh, modernized economy, with uh, good uh, investment climate. Uh, let me just give you one example, uh, uh, and I think it would be interesting for you to know. Uh, for example, our president uh, initiated a special council of foreign investors uh, in Kazakhstan in order to improve the investment climate. Uh, this uh, council, consists of the major companies from different uh, countries, and President himself chairs the meetings. So the companies have the first the opportunity to talk to the President and speak about their grievances, about their recommendations, problems, anything. Indian companies are also there. Uh, just let me give you an example. It's a uh, metal steel. Uh, uh, if you talk uh, to the representatives of the companies, they themselves say that the coming of Mittal to Kazakhstan was a turning point in his career. And I know another companies from different other countries who come to Kazakhstan with smaller resources, but today they are billion, million, uh, billion or million dollar companies. And what about the ancient uh, Silk Route? Do you think that would be able to play a major role in strengthening the relationship? and making it smoother and better? Of course, I think if uh, our ancestors were wise enough to use this Silk Road and finding it very conducive to uh, develop trade, I think uh, today we should not only use it, but uh, even uh, take it in further. 
And, but uh, will it come into reality? Yes, I, I think it will come because uh, today we are building this railway connection from China to Europe and all of the countries are connected along this Silk Road. So we are doing it right now, uh, as well as the highways, as well as the, uh, I think, air connectivity. In today's world, we have many other possibilities to, to do that. So there, there should be a willingness. If there is a willingness, I think things will come up. We'll talk on more issues after a short break. Keep watching Meet the Diplomat. Welcome back. You're watching Meet the Diplomat. How Kazakhstan and India, we both can enter into bilateral agreements on customs now? Um, I think uh, I won't be too specific on that because uh, we have already the uh, legal basis for cooperation and this is uh, the uh, agreement on uh, avoidance of double taxation. And plus, uh, we have a very important agreement ab about protection uh, of investments in both of the countries. I think this is the basic uh, things which are interesting, uh, interesting for the companies when they are trying to come to any country. I don't see any problem with customs uh, at this point of time, uh, but if necessary, of course, we can do it. And to promote peace and stability in the regions, Central Asia, and to protect the democratic norms. Do you look forward of, uh, for some kind of cooperation from India? Uh, of course, uh, India is a great democracy and uh, of course we are all aware of that and uh, we have uh, long traditions of democratic development. Uh, Kazakhstan today also on the way of uh, uh, building and ensuring that in Kazakhstan we have uh, the very open uh, democratic system and a lot lot has been done in this area uh, from the very first days of our independence and you know the Soviet Union of course and I, I think the viewers also know about that uh, uh, in order to change the whole system uh, we started our uh, democratic and political reforms from the very first days of our independence and what we have today uh, we have bicameral parliament uh, if uh, during the former Soviet Union it was mostly the state-run media in the country, today we have uh, actually all the private uh, newspapers and magazines. Just compare the figures. 100 uh, newspapers, media was during the Soviet time. Today it's more than 3,000. We have 5,000 NGOs uh, functioning in the country. Uh, we have uh, many other uh, associations, assemblies, which work today uh, independently and they have a chance to speak and have a freedom of speech, have a freedom of uh, meeting. So, uh, of course, I'm, uh, I'm not saying that any country is perfect and there is no any limit to perfection, uh, but we are constantly improving that and we are looking at the experience of India. And uh, let me mention even that the first visit my president uh, did after the getting independence, it was India. He came over here and uh, I was at that time with him uh, in this delegation, it was in 1992, uh, and lots of questions were about the constitution, about the way, how you develop your democracy. So from 1992 to this year, like so many years have gone, you've seen India growing. Yes, India is growing and uh, it's thanks to uh, the system which you have. and. We are also growing and uh, I would like to say that Kazakh model of development uh, is also working and uh, we are seeing uh, today the kind of real fruits of what we have done. Of course, after independence it was a very difficult time, but today the people are feeling much freer and all the democratic achievements, economic achievements which we have today, it's already uh, kind of you cannot return back. It's already uh, in its place and today we just have only the way forward. So uh, I'm very optimistic about the uh, cooperation which we can have well, we, uh, between our countries. I think today we have to develop this parliamentarian exchanges more actively, uh, government exchanges, people to people contacts and this is the process which are taking up today in a very big way. Uh, and what are your views on the expansion of UNSC, United Nations Security Council? Do you think is the need of the time? 
I think yes, because more representation uh, should be there. And uh, I just uh, specifically would like to say that Kazakhstan, back in 2002, uh, officially backed the position of India to be the member of uh, Permanent Council. And uh, we stick to that and we don't change it. So I think it's uh, the matter of time. Uh, but I'm sure it will uh, come into fruition. In one of my questions, you, answer, uh, you said that uh, uh, it came as a turning point in the life of uh, the Mittal group, right? There's so many Indian students, medical students especially, who go down there to Kazakhstan to study you know, medicine. But what I know is that they have to go through a lot of problems of racism, language barriers, what do you say? Are you trying to remove these uh, This is uh, very strange for me to hear. Uh, I'm very surprised to hear that there is some racial problems because I have another uh, experience that people who go to Kazakhstan, they uh, especially say that Kazakhstan is a very friendly country and they feel that they're as if they're at home. Because uh, I, I explain uh, why. It's, if you just imagine that uh, Kazakhstan having 15 million population has 130 different nationalities living in the country. Uh, and Kazakhs is just slight majority uh, in, in this group of people. So it means that we have already have the patience, uh, we have tolerance towards different ethnic groups. This is concerns the uh, ethnic issue, uh, I mean religious issue. Uh, we have 46 religious denominations in Kazakhstan. So uh, having such a diversity you cannot have any racial problem there. And uh, this is testified to me by all the people who went to Kazakhstan. But what about back. the language barrier? The language barrier is gradually being uh, removed because uh, it was already said in our program that our people would be speaking in three languages and should be speaking in three languages. It's a Kazakh, Russian, and English language. So we are trying to uh, solve this problem. And English is uh, already a language which is uh, learned in a very big way in Kazakhstan. Uh, you can, uh, uh, the, maybe the majority of our government speaks today very good English. Uh, so going to Kazakhstan, I think you will be having less and less problem, especially with the companies. We have lots of companies working today in Kazakhstan. How you can progress without knowing it? Of course, if we even do have such a problem, I think it will be eliminated very soon. In the end, uh, on my first question, you said that we have a great historical ties because Lord Buddha moved from here, went to Kazakhstan to go to China. But that means a lot of prospects of tourism is there. How are we trying to promote tourism together? Uh, tourism is, uh, a, I think, a very important area for us to develop our relations because uh, Kazakhstan gives uh, lots of opportunities for those who like wild tourism, who likes uh, nature. Uh, even going to Almaty, from Delhi to Almaty, we have a direct flight, three and a half hours. Uh, you can find mountains, you can find the singing dunes, it's a uh, desert, you can find canyons, you can find forests. So it's a uh, great opportunity to go there. Uh, last year, for example, How we are have we working on it to promote it? To promote, we have uh, India-Kazakhstan Tourism Fair every year. We hold it here in Delhi. Uh, we organize the fan tours to Kazakhstan. We invite uh, the journalists to come to Kazakhstan. How we can cooperate? Uh, we should advertise more uh, opportunities. And then I think it won't be just a problem. 65% growth last year, uh, tourism uh, from uh, India to Kazakhstan. I think that shows that there is a growing trend to know the country. Hope we turn all our dreams into reality. Thanks a lot for talking. Thank you very much. That's all for today in Meet the Diplomats. See you next week again. Till then, bye-bye.